Lost Gamer here, welcome to Pickles Blast number six. That's six videos now we're into. We know the score by now, there's a bench full of stuff behind me. I'm going to go through some of the noteworthy pickups we've had in the last month. So the stuff that I think is even worth playing, highly collectible, or will be going up in value soon. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a big collector of gigantic box sets, though I've got one coming in a few months' time that I've been waiting for for years that I can't wait to share with you guys, but I won't spoil anything yet. Um, so let's jump over to the bench, look at some new, some old, some retro, and probably some crap in there as well. We won't show you any of the CEX stuff we've been picking up as well, because, you know, when you go to a charity shop or CEX or something like that, you get games for 50p, the disc's knackered, battered, or everybody's already got a copy, so we won't be flipping up copies of Touchmaster 1 and 2 on the Nintendo DS. We won't be going through Project Gotham Racing and all those silly Tom Clancy games at 10 penny on the Xbox as well. So we're just going to be looking at what I've got, what I genuinely think is worth playing or collecting, or just fanboyish behaviour from myself, because we know we all like our Sega stuff here in the Knox Cave. And then I do tend to buy some Sega stuff, even if it's bad. So let's jump over to the bench, check some of this out, and uh, have some fun having a quick blast. There this time as well. I'm gonna go and look for them. It's great. It's brilliant. Big. Here, pull that Dreamcast there. Dreamcast. Oh, it was you. That explains it. These things are killing me in my sleep. I'm going to wake. Let's go play some games. Right. So quickly, I'm going to fire through some 3DS games because I do collect for that now, and I have picked up quite a few this month. So we'll drop these in first. First up we have Metopia. Then we've got Professor Layton in the Miracle Mask. Super Smash Brothers for 3DS. Yoshi's New Island. Mario Tennis Open with a really damaged box. Thank you very much, CEX. I shan't be buying stuff without investigating under the sticker first from you guys. Kirby Triple Deluxe. I can only ever seem to see this in the Nintendo Select variety, so I just thought, you know what, smeg it, I'll buy that one. Epic Mickey Power of Illusion. Super Mario Maker 3DS, which I talked the price down on because look at that lovely pop mark in the paper behind the... Yeah, not very nice. Anyway, Sonic Boom and the Shattered Crystal. And then we have Pokemon Equus Sapphire, Pokemon Ultra Moon, Pokemon Ultra Sun, and Pokemon Y. And that pretty much covers the 3DS stuff this month. I have been buying a few bundles as well, so I've ended up with a few consoles. We've got a, a loose machine there that we've ended up with. A little damaged, but to be fair, there were some good games in the bundle. We have a Aqua Blue machine boxed. It's rather grotty, so I do intend to clean that up at some point. And the new Super Mario Bros. 2 Special Edition. Little tip, guys, if you do see these Special Editions for sale and it says it doesn't have the game on anymore, don't worry, because till this door closes down, you can still go straight on with that 2DS and re-download the software. You don't need an online account. It's, it's registered to the console itself. So if you're unaware of that, because these are quite cheap at the moment, especially when they say the game isn't on it, snap them up, download the game. Got a console and a game. So, yeah. And also, while I was out in the wild, I did spot something I don't tend to spot very often. And if you follow my Instagram, you've probably already seen this. But I found some Neo Geo Pocket Color games Bring my total collection now to 14 games, which has taken me a hell of a long time um, to get hold of. So the first one I found was Puzzle Bobble Mini. All boxed and complete. Which I thought were awesome little find there. And the next one, it's not a top tier game from Neo Geo Pocket, but it's a game nonetheless. We have Neo Mystery Bonus, if you're like your little slot machine games. Unfortunately, money doesn't come out the bottom of the machine when you win, so I stopped playing it rather sharpish. And now we're done with all that, let's move on to some games we can actually sink our teeth into and get some gameplay off. So we'll kick off with Renovation Collection 1 on the Evercade. This multi-game cartridge comes stuffed with 16-bit games, 12 16-bit games in fact, that were released in Japan and I think the US only according to the uh, manual. I didn't know what any of these games were, never heard of any of them at all, and to be perfectly honest, some of the games on this package are absolutely awesome to play. It's chopped with platformers, beat em ups, shoot em ups, RPGs, there's even a crazy pinball game in there. All really well emulated as well, especially on the um, Evercade Versus, great on the TV, on the Versus. There's just so many interesting 16-bit titles in one package here, I can quite happily say 
This is possibly one of my favourite Evercade cartridges released so far. It just has such a variety of stuff. I do like my shoot 'em ups, I do like my RPGs, and I do like my old school 16 bit platformers, so this just really appeals to me. And to be perfectly honest, if you're an Evercade collector, I definitely recommend you get this one in your collection. I never thought this machine would pick up this much steam, and to be fair, I'm really enjoying a lot of titles on here. So that's Renovation Collection Volume 1. Definitely worth investing in if you have an Evercade. Next up we've got the awesome Streets of Rage 4 physical release for the Nintendo Switch. I did download this game digitally when it first came out and, but I don't have the Mr X DLC so I thought why not buy the cartridge. This game is absolutely fantastic guys, the more time you spend with it the more you understand the subtleties of the combat just the more you can kick ass on this game and it just gets better and better and better the more time you spend with it. I was very dubious as to what a sequel to Streets of Rage would be like. It isn't in exactly the same play style as the originals, but it's got a, a style all of its own, and to be perfectly honest, it works for me, and I've played this game so much on the Xbox and other platforms as well. I'm going to look forward to sinking my teeth into the Nintendo Switch version of this. Next up we have Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania Launch Edition for the Nintendo Switch. This is a complete Monkey Ball package, Monkey Ball fans, it comes stuffed with over 300 levels, the first 10 of which I recognise from Monkey Ball 1 on the GameCube. So hopefully there's new content in there, and Sega you really should have put it first if there is, because the old games we've played a million times. In the Launch Edition you get a lovely bit of content there, it gives you cosmetics which I've not really used yet, but you get this lovely, lovely lucky manual that's empty and soulless and just full of health and safety information. Nice enough, but back in the box you go. As always with Nintendo Switch games, it does it does make me happy when they put some artwork on the inside of the box instead of just having the white back of the paper staring back at you and a little cartridge in the corner. Monkey Ball guys, complete collection, not bad, but we've done it all before. Ready? Next up, Nintendo's favourite little chubby plumber returns in Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury for the Nintendo Switch. Super Mario 3D World was a conversion of the Wii U game which was a pretty damn good isometric 3D Mario platformer. I did buy this for the Bowser's Fury content as I thought it would be a little bit extra on there and it's turned out to be a lovely fleshed out piece of content I'm enjoying playing. Occasionally Bowser wakes up, turns ginormous and rains fire and brimstone down on you making life very difficult for Mario as you try to collect the cat shines with Bowser Jr. helping you along the way. It's a really interesting game to play and anyone that's a fan of Super Mario should already have this by now. Great game. Next up we have Team Sonic Racing 30th Anniversary Edition for the Nintendo Switch. Picked this up for about 15 quid at Smith's which I thought was a bargain. Unfortunately this game's going to stay sealed because I did play it on the Xbox One and I thought it was a complete turd. Sonic Racing Transformed was so much better than this was. Unfortunately to this day I still can't get my head around the concept of why you'd want to put Sonic the Hedgehog in a flipping car.
Now it's time to cleanse your palate with a proper Sonic the Hedgehog game that was actually good to play. Sonic Mania Plus, this is a physical release again for the Nintendo Switch. What a fantastic Sonic game this was. It's been a long time since we've had a bit of 2D content of this calibre. It's a shame a lot of the levels were rehashes or sort of enhanced versions of the originals. Here's hoping that a sequel will all be nice, fresh new stuff, if Sega consider doing that. I'm going to leave this one sealed, as I've already got the digital download, but it's definitely worth picking up nonetheless if you don't already have it. It's a lot of fun. Now we have Pokken Tournament. This game took me completely by surprise, to be honest. Somebody gave me a copy of this. It's something I wouldn't normally buy myself because I thought it was just going to be a Pokemon game. But surprisingly enough, it's not a bad little beat-em-up underneath. The only problem I had was the constant commentary from the trainer or whoever it is that's with you. It just won't shut up while you're playing. So for a free game, it's not bad. It plays a little like Tekken, so I get the Pokken in the title. But yeah, not a bad little case, to be honest. Next up we have a tasty little 8-bit game, Asterix and the Secret Mission on the Sega Master System. This game unfortunately didn't come with a manual, but the box and the cartridge were in pretty damn fine condition. The price was good enough for me. And like Retro Chef says, you don't play the manual guys. Beautiful animation for a Master System game, lovely and colourful. Uh, little hint of slowdown every now and then, but it's not a bad little 2D platformer. And I do like these uh, quirky little Asterix games on the Master System. No guys, you don't have deja vu. Yes, it's another monkey ball game, but funnily enough, a lot of these levels I've already played on that Switch one. Oddly enough, this disc wouldn't load in my original Xbox. Well, it did, but the sound was horrible through my capture card. Um, it didn't work at all in my Xbox One. Dusted off the 360, got on faithful 360, whacked this in, one little update, bosh, works a charm. Super Monkey Ball Deluxe is an enhanced version of the original GameCube game, and unfortunately all the levels on this I'd already played on the Switch one. Ready? Go! And the final game I picked up in a trade when I was on Swap Shop the other month. It is Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse, or as it's known in Japan, Mickey No Magical Adventure. It's a 16-bit platformer from Capcom, and to be perfectly honest guys, the guys at Capcom were really good at this kind of thing on the Super Nintendo. I remember stuff like Aladdin being great as well. This was a really good game, had a very interesting mechanic where Mickey could change outfits to deal with certain enemies and certain situations as you progress through the game. It made it very interesting and kept the gameplay fresh as you went through. This is an excellent example, in my eyes, of a Super Famicom game as well that's been really well looked after. That box has only a few marks on it. The manual looks like it's never been flicked through. And this cartridge, guys, 
looks like it's never been out of the baggy. But it's coming out, as we all know, there's going to be a little window in the corner. We're not scared of having to play on this one. Flicking through the manual as well, you can tell that we weren't as spoiled as the Japanese players were because their manuals were so colourful, well presented. It sort of broke down everything nice and pictorial as well. We just got black and white pages, which kind of sucked for us. Please check out Nintendo Arcade, Alex's channel. I'll leave a link in the description. He's got an awesome setup of arcade games and Nintendo stuff in his little man cave. Check him out for all things arcade games. I love his jammer machine. It's pretty damn awesome. So if you like your arcade stuff, your Nintendo stuff, drop down to the description, click on that link and check out his channel. Now I'm going to try and get this back in the box without causing any damage to it. Honestly, the flaps on the bottom of this box feel like they've not been open uh, at all. Very good. So I'm going to pop this in a nice protector, stick it on the shelf in the Knots Cave, and uh, it's going to look lovely with my Super Famicom collection. Here we are at the end of another Pickups Blast. We've had plenty of 3DS, we've had a bit of Neo Geo love. We've had probably the best game on the Evercade so far in Renovation Collection. Honestly guys, if you have an Evercade, snap that one up. It's a fantastic little package. We've had a few more games for the Switch. Some of them good, some of them not so good. Sorry Team Sonic Racing fans out there, but I just don't like that game. Transformed was a much better game, and still to this day, the concept of Sonic in a car just boggles Knox Gamer's poor little mind. Going to be spending a lot of time with Bowser's Fury though, that really is a lot of fun to play. Hopefully the content's quite long. I've played it for about roughly a couple of hours now, and it's a lot of fun to play. Asterix, I do have both Master System games now, so at some point I will give them a good play. Super Monkey Ball, unfortunately guys, no matter which release you get, always seems to have the same levels. And if Sega have included new content on the Switch one, it's hidden away behind all the old stuff. Pokken Tournament, unusually interesting fighting game with irritating commentary. If you can turn that off, I might play it a little bit more. Not really my cup of tea when it comes to fighters. I prefer my two-dimensional and Street Fighter Alpha. And then we have Mickey No Magical Adventure in that lovely trade I made on Swap Shop. Honestly guys, check out Swap Shop. I'll put a link to Retro Chef's channel in the description and I also dropped a link in there for Nintendo Arcade. Absolutely awesome guys. Be really helpful to me on YouTube and they make some great content. I've been Nuts Gamer. This has been Pickles Blast number six. I'm gonna lose count one day or start using my toes. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Take care and I'll see you next time. I'm <laughs> sorry.